Aaron, where are you, bud? No, 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 I'm by the red phone box. Where are you? I can't. Where are you, mate? What one? Oh, finally. Come on, buddy. Come on, man, let's go. Right, we finally found him, Aaron Branch of Social Agendas. He was hiding behind a red box, and now that I've got him, Aaron, talk me through what we're gonna be covering off today. Uh, mate, we're gonna talk lead generation, talk about social media, what platforms. I mean, damn, ain't you asking, ain't you asking the question? Oh yeah, I'm the podcast host. <laughs> so look, enough of that, stick around. It's gonna be an awesome episode. Aaron's a great guy, Dragon's Den, pitching, he's doing everything. So let's go learn right. from him. Let's go jump in the office. Yeah, Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So before we begin today's episode, I'd like to say a big thank you to Casita Properties, the UK leading property company when it comes to off-market, discreet buy-to-let sales. All of their information will be in the link below. Aaron Branch, founder of Social Agendas, good friend of mine, I uh, had Aaron, Aaron on before. Aaron, for those of the viewers who don't know who you are yet, yeah. Mate, give us an introduction to who you are and what you're doing. The shortest elevator introduction ever made. <laughs> so my name's Aaron Branch. Uh, I run a social media marketing agency called Social Agendas. We've been going now since 2016, had a lot of success there. And recently, I am also the director and first investor of a really exciting new business called Deliver Me, which was recently featured on Dragon's Den as well. Yeah, so that was a huge success. So congrats, mate. And Thank you. I know a lot of people that are going to watch this as well and newcomers may have seen you on Dragon's Den. So that was a huge achievement. Thanks. Let's talk about the opportunity right now because this is the business yeah. that you're in uh, and I think there's a lot of learning to be done here. What is the opportunity right now through social branding? The opportunity is massive and it's huge and I've literally just on the way here, we were just talking about it in the car. Social media platforms, I the first thing I ever did when I started in business, no clients, no money, um, I was on universal credit at the time. The first thing I did was get a credit card for Argos and get a camera because I knew that regardless of anything, I needed to become the kind of example that clients needed to see in order to believe in the stuff I was saying would work for their businesses and brands. And from that moment, fast forwarding it to what it is today with new platforms like TikTok, even though it's not new now, but people are adopting it a lot more. The opportunity is huge. I mean, I'm talking to 20 year olds who are generating 80% of their e-commerce sales through organic content on platforms like TikTok right now. And we're talking about 20, 30, 40K revenues a month at 20 years old through literally posting free videos and then adding a little bit of like retargeting to it. And this is what's open season now for everybody. So it's absolutely huge. And you can see a million examples of it. And I've seen and been a part of so many examples and success stories of the social opportunity. But it's, it's just the beginning. It's still right there for the taking for whoever wants to produce the content, target it towards right people, offer value, and then of course sell products and services off the back of it. So it's massive. I think the opportunity is there, certainly. I think a battle at the moment, which let, let's cover this, is you can buy the camera, you can go do this, you can go do that, you can start uploading on TikTok. But as you well know, and so do I, it can be mentally draining. Almost, mm -hmm. you know, we were saying off camera that, you know, the first thing you do when you meet up now, yeah. it's all about capturing content. You know, yeah. There's that element of, you know, not even talking to the human that you're meeting initially because it's all about capturing the footage. However, there is a purpose to that because it's, it's to do with your business, it's mm -hmm. to do with your branding. So how can someone start but find a balance so they stay mentally sane? It's all about just scheduling it around what you do. And of course, you know, unless you're a content creator full time, you're never going to have the time to do it because you need to be efficient and you need to work on higher leverage tasks in your business as well. So if you're managing a 20 plus team and you've got, you know, four team leaders who are managing the rest of the team for you, of course, you're going to naturally not have enough time to spend on camera as, as well as running the big operation that you've got going on. But contrary to that, if you have the ability to do it, it can be very manageable because you can batch produce content. You know, just like we're doing every single day for clients, we're not sending a content creator every week out to shoot a client's content to stay on trend. We're actually just sending them once a month. They'll batch produce everything we need, but you can only do that if you've got a plan and if you've got a strategy behind why you're doing what you're doing. 
problem in most creators and why it becomes mentally draining is, is there's no light at the end of the tunnel because you're constantly creating, 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 but to what end? When do you actually get a return on the time investment that you're putting into it? And that's why if you have a strategy, if you're thinking about what's actually going to be the end goal of this, is it more engagement, is it more sales, is it more traffic to a new offer, is it testing a new offer? If you actually focus it on that end goal, then everything else becomes just a piece of the puzzle to getting there. And that's the problem with most people and that's why people get overwhelmed, that's why people give up because they're like, you know what, I'm posting content, I've done it consistently for a week, nothing's happened, no new sales, no new engagement, no new followers, but then you gotta look at the strategy, and you gotta look at the plan that they've got and they're clearly not going in the direction of actually getting an end result and that's why they give up or they just get mentally drained and fatigued. And then the, the opposite is true as well where you can overdo your content and you're putting out way too much, again, to no end. So it's about getting the balance right and it's different for every single person we've worked with. But the quickest way to shortcut that is just batch produce it, get a plan together, know what the end goal is and produce it all in one, one sitting, which can yeah. just be a day of shooting, a very comfortable day as well for one month's worth of content. Yeah, I would totally agree. And anyone watching, those are some really good points. Batching your content, saving yourself time. You, you said exactly the same thing as what I say is your return on time invested. Mm. I, I don't quite get it where someone will post, 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 travel, spend fuel, going places, putting all this content together. Like me today. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't get anything out of it in terms of, if you're doing that consistently and you your expenditure is going out the door yeah, and you're yeah. thinking what is coming in, that's yeah. when you need to, like you say, reevaluate and actually go, okay, what's my structure? Why, why am I actually doing yes. YouTube? Why am I doing Instagram? And uh, let's just touch on that actually, because yeah. I know when we spoke before, yeah. I came off Instagram because I lost my original account. Yeah, um, That was my main reason. Protest. Yeah. <laughs> but actually... In reflection, it allowed me to detox, yeah. reevaluate, and hit YouTube. Yeah. So there was there was a purpose. Um, you know, when it comes to platforms, there yeah. are so many. I find many people try to juggle too many platforms. Yeah. How do you focus on the right one for you? Um, well, it's where your audience is that again you're targeting, right? Where are the people spending the most time that you want to influence and persuade or engage with, right? Um, but it's also about which platform is giving the most back, right, in terms of reach, in terms of impressions. Now, like you said, YouTube has been there for decades, right? People have been using and uploading to YouTube for a long, long time. And it's, it's also about the, the focus that people have on these different platforms. People who go on YouTube and consume content there are usually able to spend more time consuming that content. Whereas if you're looking at TikTok, you've got 15 to 20 seconds max to get in to the brain of somebody and grab their attention and hold them on your content. So it's also kind of about what is catered to your style of content and what are you actually promoting? Are you giving value? Are you doing you no know, podcast giving, you know, educational value or are you just promoting your products and showing how they work, the back end of your business, quick, short, sharp, snappy content that has the chance to go viral, right? So it's about kind of focusing on the platforms which are to your advantage but then also focusing on the platforms. And they're the two that I've, I've just said because I'm now starting to focus on these. And I'm a, a career man of Facebook and Instagram. Like I've built my entire career and anything good that has come of my business has been off those platforms. But even now, I'm pivoting right now as we're sitting here to TikTok and YouTube yeah. because it's about the quality of audience as well. You know, when somebody's spending time on Instagram, it's, it's, a, it's a scrolling, you know, nonstop scroll. Whereas, People are watching YouTube on the TVs now, right? And TikTok, the reason why I say I'm pivoting towards TikTok right now is because their ads game has been stepped up in the last year and a half. They've put so many tools to make it equally, if not better, for targeting people and growing your business through the TikTok ads platform because they've modeled it basically off Facebook and then even built some, some better integrations on there. But because the algorithm on TikTok is giving so many views to content on profiles, which is unbelievable when you look at the followers they have it's giving so much reach and then when you have the ad side of it now where you can retarget those impressions effectively now you're talking about a huge opportunity and we've just launched a brand new product it's called the tiktok launchpad that's how serious we are and we're getting all of our clients on it because it's a huge channel for generating sales and again it's only when someone else comes into your life who's doing it who's having massive success you sit in their office you see their orders coming in and you're like wow this is huge why aren't all of my clients doing this right now? Why isn't everybody doing this? Building and monetizing an audience on a platform 
which is still giving so much to the users. So when choosing the platforms, it's about the value of the user, but also it's about what platforms are actually giving the most for the content you produce, regardless of what size account you have, or if you're an influencer or not an influencer, or whatever. It's fair game on TikTok right now. Again, if, if people aren't on it, they need to start looking at it with some serious focus. I started two years ago, I deleted all my videos. The biggest video I had, right, I was doing all sorts of content, trialing different things out. I had a 20 pound note and I waved some scissors over it and I, did, I was pretending that I was gonna cut it and I didn't. That got 150,000 views and then I put the phone down so I'm never going on TikTok again. It's nonsense because that's the kind of content that gets views. Yeah. But now it's completely diversified as well and the platform is full of creators who are putting out loads of different niche specific content and it's working yeah. in a big, big way. I think also when you choose a platform, you need a platform that allows you to obviously have the chance to announce your product, to talk about what you want to talk about and like 15, 20, 30 second clips yeah. that you'd almost say to yourself, well, there is no excuse because who doesn't have, especially on a batch day where mm -hmm. you could do three YouTube shorts, load of TikToks and a full YouTube video. Mm -hmm. So you do have to choose your time in, but also a platform where you can put your products because there's no point using a platform. I find TikTok... It isn't the best in terms of leaving your products on there unless you're talking about them. Whereas on YouTube, in the description, I could have every single product mm -hmm. where, like say, you get engaged people who are watching a 20 minute video mm -hmm. and you talk about a product, they go down and click on it. Mm -hmm. I've had good conversion rate of products. So there is that when choosing. The other thing is as well, which I find and want to know your thoughts on is that if you throw enough content at the wall, something yeah. will still, something will stick eventually. And I think one of the biggest hurdles, certainly when I talk to people about branding and, and the complication of what platform to choose is actually that until they realize or have seen firsthand what someone is earning or the potential, they don't necessarily believe it. Yeah. I think you need to see it to then believe it mm -hmm. from going, well, hang on a minute. I work in a warehouse or a nine to five. I earn 30, 40 grand a year. How are you earning that in a month? I don't get it. They yeah. need to see it to believe it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And that's what Marnie Zabir she owns Shop Trezor. She's Lord Sugar's uh, business partner. She'd be great to come down and sit here as well because she is, for me, the king of or the queen of TikTok right now because that was the exact example. I went to her office in Birmingham. She's literally 10 minutes up the road. Uh, I sat there. I looked at the whole operation, looked at her marketing strategy. And then when, when she opened it up and I was just like, wow, the ads is just like an afterthought right now. Yeah. So we're helping, you know, potentially helping with scaling that side up. But the gold and the, the asset in the business is the brand and the TikTok audience. And it's interesting what you said there about, you know, not necessarily converting. It depends on your products, doesn't it? It depends on what kind of thing you're offering on the platform. But again, TikTok's a different approach to selling products and services because that direct face to camera stuff, that can convert with ads and stuff like that. But on that platform, you're building stories, you're building stories and you're, you're really taking advantage of trends you know, what music to put on there, what kind of, you know, comedic kind of content can you get to entertain people? So it's much more of a, it's much more of a soft sell. It's more, it's less serious than other platforms as well, which is something that I really like because when you're talking about business, when you're talking about growing, marketing, all this, it can become really stale because it's just boring. I, I even get bored of hearing this stuff myself. It's marketing, like, okay, we get it. You know what I mean? But with TikTok, especially, you can be really creative and you can do it all within the app. And that means you can create quickly. And if you're a creative mind, and I consider myself to be that because I've got a degree in media, you know, I've come from this background, it's a playground. And it's not so serious either because the volume you can put out on there, one video doesn't take off. Who cares? You're just testing ideas and getting them into the marketplace and building brand story, which is ultimately the thing that's going to sell much longer than one ad, one video or anything else. It's going to be that brand story that sticks with people around anything, books, e-commerce, lead generation. I've got so many examples. We're doing this right now, you know, so yeah. I've got so many clients who are onboarded with this right now that we're building the strategy for their TikToks with on this launch pad thing. And it's endless. The ideas are endless. It's unbelievable. We've got, you know, we've got um, a garden home pod furniture business. So they build these pods in people's gardens. We've got a halal online shop, which only provides halal foods which is UK national delivery um, next day. So it's kind of like groceries, but all halal online. Um, it's just endless, dude. It's exciting. It's yeah. exciting. Which is an important point to lead on to is dominating your sector. So, uh, you know, anyone I've spoken to in marketing, 
they pretty much said all the, th the same thing in yeah. terms of be the face of your business in yeah. every angle. So how important is it to be on the camera, on the TikToks, on the YouTube shorts, just everything to do with your business, you need to be at the front of I it. I think it's fundamentally about human psychology. People trust people. And that's why instead of promoting social agendas when it first started, what were social agendas back then? Nothing. Who cares? It's a logo. It's a, it's a piece of branding. But your, your personal story is also really powerful because no matter what business you're applying that attention to, whatever you're talking about, and the greatest example is Deliver Me. So forget this pre previous round, the, the first round that we did for 230,000 pound raised, we did that four day, in four days off of my Instagram account. All I did was talk about it on my stories and we raised nearly a quarter of a million pounds in four days. So if I just promoted Deliver Me through Deliver Me, People aren't going to trust that because they don't know it. They don't know the story, the background, and the development to that point. But because of social agendas and what I've built there, and that audience is so credible with business owners I've helped, you know, friends and family who've been a part of that journey, staff members, all of these people validate who you are. So the sooner you can start producing a personal brand and being in front of the camera, you don't have to necessarily be the one on the camera every day because if you've got a team, you can obviously leverage that as well. But if you can actually put your face out there, people are just going to trust you. So when that potential sales interaction comes with 5% of your audience at that moment where they make a purchasing, purchasing decision, half the sales already made because the trust element isn't an objection. And with a lot of the sales coaching and the kind of consulting I do, what we're trying to build in marketing now, anybody can run an ad, it's how do you put 40 to 50% of that sales process and that sales interaction in the content so that it's not an issue and you can just bypass it and have shorter sales cycles when they get an opportunity to buy your products. So it's about going a couple of layers deeper. And um, the only way to do that is through a personal brand because mm. people don't trust logos. And why would you? The biggest logos in the world, McDonald's, they're killing more people than anything. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah, why yeah. would they trust branding? But yourself, that's your reputation. And it's also a level of accountability you're putting in the marketplace. So once we're building that personal brand yeah. and people have that trust, that credibility, what are some simple steps to create some sales funnels? You know, how, how does someone implement some sales funnel off the back of credibility? So the first thing you need to do is build a landing page. And with funnels, well, before you build a landing page, you need an offer. So what are you actually offering of value? Establish your offer. Number two, get a landing page, click funnels. We still use it to this day. It's incredible. We copy and paste our funnels onto clients' funnels and just re-amend it and rebrand it to their offers. Um, so you get your, your landing page, you connect it to a CRM, and then all you need then is traffic. It's that simple. But your, your offer is what's going to sell. You can have the best personal brand in the world. If your offer doesn't solve a problem or if you don't get the psychology behind all the pain points that you're solving with that, that offer, no one's going to buy it anyway. So people often look at their marketing and say, oh, we've got a great product, we've got a great offer, the marketing's a problem. And then we'll run the marketing and then you'll see naturally and you'll speak to customers, is this relevant to your business? Is this relevant to your life? If it's a, you know, a B2C kind of product. And people will make the decision and tell you. So often it's not just having a good funnel, it's having a good offer and also having a good marketing strategy to promote what that offer does. Because if the offer's shit, no one cares. So make another offer. But what people do is they get attached because they put so much energy, so much effort. This is my life's work. I've written this book or whatever it is. Mate, your book's out of date. That was 10 years ago's kind of economy. You need to write a new book or an updated version and it needs to be updated and that's actually a real story. Yeah. So they did it and it became a success. But you've got to stick with the best offers you possibly can create. And ultimately, again, that's the long-term strategy. That's what's going to sell long-term. Marketing ploys, trends, they come and go so quickly. No one in the world has enough time, energy, and effort to be able to edit themselves quickly enough to match the market. So you better make sure your offers stand up. Yeah, I think people plateau more than they do keep up with the times. I think if when you start to sit still is when you're out of touch yeah. and you almost get left behind. I find a lot of people, they wonder why their sales have gone down, uh, why they're not getting as many clients. And then actually you look at their business structure and their branding and it's almost like it's none. There isn't anything there. So, you know, yeah. it is, it's so important. You've obviously dealt in a lot of startup companies, new companies, looking to launch, you know, the marketing behind it. You're involved in that all the time. I want to touch on the Dragon's Den, which yeah. is going to lead into almost how to pitch your business mm -hmm. if you need to take on capital. So just talk us through what was the experience like on Dragon's Den and what did you learn personally? 
you know what, I learned that I'm human. <laughs> so we've, we've done like events over the years now, lots of events. I've spoken on other people's stages. And like I've spoken in front of a thousand people. That was my biggest ever audience as a guest for one of my clients' events. And that was nerve wracking. And that was like a breakthrough moment where I got a lot of confidence because there's so many faces in that audience. But equally as scary as speaking to small audiences. And with Dragons then, you know, there was a lot of anticipation because our events, like we'll put one on next month and we'll promote it for a month and it's done. You know, that, that timeline is really short. Dragons then was like a a five month process to get on the show. Yeah. Um, they approached us after they saw our first crowdfunding round and said, you guys would be great for the show. So we went through all the, you know, the kind of stuff you needed to do. And then the day finally comes, they don't tell you when you're going to be coming out. So the reason I think they do that is because people, when they have a deadline, are just looking to escape because yeah. the anxiety that you're feeling, because you've never met these people before and the whole hundred plus crew are focusing on you for coming out of those doors. So when those doors open, I, I, I can really only describe it. It's like the doorway of heaven opening and like the lights are in your face and then you've got to walk to your queue. And literally my biggest concern, right, was not tripping up on the wooden floorboards yeah. and falling flat on my face. So your first priority is doors open, you know, big smiles, get onto, onto the queue on the floor. And then of course, you've got two minutes to nail and you have to nail your elevator pitch, which... I actually didn't because I actually forgot to say how much equity they're going to get for <laughs> the, uh, I think you're asking for 50K. Yeah. So I actually messed up that first part of the pitch, but I'm actually happy it happened like that because when they then asked an immediate question for how much equity and then I could laugh and then it just brought them, the, the tone was great from the get go. So the experience as a whole, amazing, man. And I'm really grateful for the BBC, all the dragons, legends, absolute icons, man. I, and I've been watching that show my whole life. So to be on there. It's still surreal right now. You know, yeah. when I'm uploading content. So some of the first content I've put on TikTok is me on Dragon's Den getting shut down by Deborah Meaden. And it's, it doesn't seem real, me looking at myself on the show. Yeah. It's just so surreal. Yeah. It's just strange. Because you followed it for so long. Yeah, yeah. How am I there? It's just not me. It doesn't feel like it's even me. But yeah. it was an amazing experience. And anyone who gets the chance, look, at the end of the day, you're getting three to four million impressions. And if you do a good social strategy off the back of it, you're going to get a hell of a lot more out of it. And that's kind of what we did as well. I was going to say, you know, I think there's success off the back of it anyway, if you follow up and you market it right. Yeah. I mean, you know, I remember when you started releasing all of it, you were everywhere and everyone was talking about it. And yeah. I mean, your impression reach must have been absolutely massive. Great, yeah. What did you learn for anyone watching this thinking, you know, I've got a startup business, I'm going to attack branding, marketing, yeah. I'm going to do all of it, I'm going to be on every platform. What would you say in terms of, you know, if they need to pitch to investors, what would you say yeah. that there's a top tip of thinking, okay, you're asking for capital, but just remember that you need to do this or yeah. do that? Well, you've got to remember again, the personal branding thing comes into it. So a lot of our investors were personal relationships, either through being clients, whatever, um, but with loads of strangers as well. So it's like, you have to remember that people trust people and they're buying into you and your ability to grow the company. They're not just buying into your idea. So the priority number one is making sure your positioning and your credibility is as best as it can be. Um, but second of all, you've got to give people inspiration. And you also, for, this is my own experience, you have to tell them what the end game is and be honest. Look, are you trying to you know, grow this company to sell it? Are you growing it to list it? Are you growing it just to get profits and dividends for the rest of your life? What's in it for everybody? And a lot of the big investors that we've spoken to and had really big traction with, they asked those questions. Mm -hmm. What do you want? And one of, the, one of them asked, actually asked, what's your number? Like, what's a life-changing amount of money for you right now? So if we get an exit at this amount, you'd be happy. And that, that was for me and, you know, Zach, my business partner. So it was, um, it's all about yourself being the best version of you, but also sharing inspiration being, about... Being open as well. Yeah, being honest. Being transparent honest, about yeah. the, the vision of it. Exactly. And what, what is the end game financially as well? Because at the end of the day, you're asking for money. You're, you're talking about financial investment. So they want to know what the return you anticipate getting in. And if your answer isn't ambitious enough, they're going to tell you that as well because there's not enough in it for them. So it's about just being really clear on where your life path is going and then sharing that vision through that business of what it could achieve. And then that's where we've seen big investors just keep coming. Really valuable points. What I'd like to get from you now is, you know, someone who might be watching this thinking, you know, I have a business, uh, not so much up on the branding, the marketing. What are the first steps really of 
taking over 2022? How can someone really get stuck in? But also, like I say, going back to almost the first question in, in staying mentally sane, I think it's really important that we touch on this because so many people do dive into it head first and blow out two, three months down the line. Yeah. You know, give us... <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, we both have. So we know what it's like, but yeah. if someone does want to take over the rest of 2022 and really yeah. benefit in their business... What kind of things can they be doing right now? It's all about content. Content is everything right now. So focusing all your energy on content is free to produce. You can do it on your smartphone. You can get some natural lighting from a window. You can get some box lighting for a professional feel, whatever. But everybody has access to a smartphone with a camera pretty much in the UK economy right now if they're in business. And that means you can produce content. So the quickest thing and the easiest way to get traction is look at somebody in your industry who's doing it well. And then there's a, a guy called Alex Formosi who says, match, first you need to match a competition, then you can surpass them. Match their content, do their content concepts, do it better, do it based on your brand, do it based on your story. There's, there's, no, there's no copywriting or licensing on these platforms. Take an idea and make it better and make it your own. And you can then compete with anybody in your industry. So content is the benchmark. And then after you've made some great content, you see what's getting traction. Go and find some money. If you don't have money, go make some money. If you can't sell and make money, go get an investor. If you can't do that, go get a loan, just like I did from the Prince's Trust to start my business and invest it into adverts and sell something off the back of all of the audience who are watching your content. It's that simple. Content retargeting sale. Content retargeting sale. There's nothing else to say. Don't that is literally how you can dominate it. Yeah. Don't, so massive point. Don't overcomplicate and a structure, a routine behind all your marketing, your branding, your content. Mm -hmm. Is there something that has stuck out in your life, a book, a mentor, someone that's, you know, a quote, is there anything out there that sort of people can go away, perhaps research or even buy? I think, obviously, I think there's one book that I've just read recently, Alex Hormozy, $100 million offers. That book for me condensed six years worth of my career knowledge on sales, funnels, um, psychology in terms of, you know, different marketing psychology and hooks. And it condensed it into like a, a three, four hour read. One of the best books on, no, the best book on marketing I've ever read. 100%, $100 million offers, Alex Hormozy. And you know what? I should be even protecting this secret because <laughs> I don't even want to share it. It's that good. Well, what we're going to do, we're going to include that in the uh, description below so we're going to share it it's no longer a secret you've said it it's out there now um aaron it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on my channel mate uh, there's going to be lots of lessons lots of value i hope the viewers have made plenty of notes um, and until there will be a next time i'm sure we'll see you all very soon